that out of the way. So SSH, um, what is SSH? <coughs> SSH stands for Secure Shell. Um, it was originally um, only used to connect to remote machines um, with an encrypted connection so that no one uh, in the middle could um, interfere with what we were doing. Could not, they couldn't log what we were doing. They couldn't um, uh, put their own stuff in um, and these things. Um, it also allows us to verify how, what, whether the server we are actually connecting to is what we want it to be. So if someone were, do, were to do nasty stuff and would try to make us log into their own computer to pretend and pretend it was Gadi, for example, um, SSH should be able to figure that out at least, um, at least if you have it set up correctly. Um, SSH offers two more things that we will be using. Uh, or, or, no, sorry, I want to talk in specifically let's let's start with SSH. Sorry. So SSH generally um, you have to tell it um, the username and the server. So if I wanted to connect to Gadi, for example, I could take SSH Gadi dot NCI dot org dot au. But if I try to do that, well, the first thing you can already see I've deleted my configuration files. So the first thing it says is, well, I don't know whether what Gadi is. Gadi says uh, it has this identifies itself through this um, uh, fingerprint here. Is this the server that you want to connect to? Um, now, usually, if you were to, if you were really um, uh, skeptic, you could try to verify that with the with NCI, but usually it just you just do um, you just type yes here, and it will then save this key this fingerprint, and the next time you would uh, you connect to Gadi and it deliver it, it would deliver you something different, then it would know something is up and would tell would would deny you connecting to it. Um, that's what it says. Uh, permanently added um, this to the list of known hosts. And then it tries, it, it asks me for a password to log in, but you can see here it uses the username from my local machine. That's not my, um, that's not my NCI credentials. So what I have to do is I have to type my full username. And yet, because it has already identified Gadi, um, now from the test stored the, the details. So now it doesn't ask me for that anymore. It just has automatically verified it. It asks me for a password. My password is in my um, password manager. I strongly recommend everyone uses a password manager. I'm using NPass, but there's also LastPass, Dashlane, whatever. Um, strongly encouraged. So, and this is how I'm and now I've now I'm logged in. This is this is the normal way to do it, but um, we can make things a little bit more convenient for us by using the configuration file. So at the moment we have to type always have to type SSH uh, username as at server. So the configuration file for um, SSH is on Linux and macOS machines in your um, home directory slash config. So, uh, sorry, dot SSH. And in here, at the moment, there's just the known hosts, which is the file that was just created uh, when we connected to Gadi for the first time. So that's that's how, um, how it knows that this is a server, but we're creating a config file now. And that is called config and is in the SSH directory. So now we say host Gadi. We say the host Gadi has the host name 
scadi.nci.org.au. And, and I can also say user, hxw599. Now what that does, I now only have to type SSH Gadi, and it will automatically um, fill out both the username and the full um, and the full uh, host name. I'm not I'm not going to log in now. I just wanted to say, show this. Uh, actually, I want to log in. Oh my stop. Um, because for some reason I put S X11 forwarding on this in here. Yeah. Oh well. So um, Linux systems have um, an interesting feature that is that the software can run on one machine and interface with the and have the graphical user interface on a different machine. That's quite complicated. It's called um, X11 forwarding. Um, and X11 is the old, really old standard for um, Linux and Unix um, with uh, graphical user interfaces. It's, it's old and not very efficient. So VNC is much faster, but it's really easy to use. Um, of course, what you need is on your local machine, um, an X11 server that then, inter that then interprets the stuff it gets from the remote machine. So Linux already has it. If you have uh, Mac OS, um, I would recommend X Quartz. And with Windows, I would recommend X Ming. Um, both of those are free from the links that I'm giving down here. And both of them are pretty old. So the last updates were both, in both cases, about four years ago. Um, I'm sh I think X Ming is still being developed but only in a paid version. So you would have to pay money for that. X quartz, I don't know. But um, as you can see, I have X quartz here running. And um, if I now try, try to start um, an, a graphical program like the X clock, it doesn't let, it let me do it because it doesn't have um, X11 activated. Um, I'm logging out. Uh, I would have to do um, SSH minus Y. Um, there's SSH minus X is um, just the X, uh, X11 forwarding. Um, minus Y, minus capital Y means that it's trusted. And for some reason with Gadi, it only works if you, if you also trust Gadi to do stuff. And password, copy, paste. Now, if I run X clock, we can see that this clock has appeared here in my, on my local screen. Again, there are also, we can add this to the options because we probably wanted to do that all the time. So we can add this to the config. Yes, and forward, excellent, trusted. Yes. And now it's automatically, it's automatically in here. Okay. But um, we're getting a little bit tired of always typing our our key our our password in. So SSH is able to um, has more more available options to authenticate itself, and the best, safest, and the only one that that it always has to accept is so-called key pairs. Um, now key pairs. Uh, is something that in uh, cryptography and 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 um, uh, electronics and in, in, in internet happens quite a lot. 
it basically is, uh, it creates two files from a shared random, random number. And they have some sort of weird, uh, they, they have two features that you can use for computers. Um, one is, one of these files is called the public key. That's meant to be, that you can share that to anyone. Um, it's meant to, meant to be passed around. Um, and this is, um, that, that gives other people to, uh, uh, the ability to know you. And the private key, oops, the private key you keep to yourself. You don't do anything with it. Uh, so you, you don't want anyone else um, to have it because if anyone else had this file, then they could uh, act as if they were you. And with these key pairs, you can do two things. The one is the, the traditional thing, the first thing that you think of, uh, encryption. If I wanted to send you an encrypted message, then you would, if I had your public key, I could use your pr the public key to encrypt the message, but only you with, the pri with your private key would be able to decrypt it. So not even I would be able to decrypt it um, with, your uh, with the public key, and also no one else who has your public key would be able to decrypt it. But what we are using here is the, sig is, is the second part, the signature. Oops, I can't highlight this thing. Just a little bit annoying. Can I? Ah, oh, whatever. Um, ah, the pointer. It's the signature. Um, what, what a signature does is um, it allows you to create a so-called electronic signature to any data. So consider the easy, easiest way is you have a document and then with this document and your private key, you can create some more, some, a little more data that is unique to your, um, the, the, to your private key and the document. And anyone else could then look, is this a valid signature? And has the document been altered? So is this, is this a valid signature to this document? And that is something that SSH uses uh, quite extensively. So what it does is um, you tell the SSH server in this, in this, type, uh, this way, Gadi, Look, here is my public key. And then when you want to log in, Gadi will say, oh, I have this, he has a public key. I'm giving you, I'm giving you a challenge. So Gadi will create some sort of random data, send it to you, and then you use your private key to digitally sign this random data that Gadi has just sent to you and send that back. And then Gadi will say, uh, will verify the signature and if the, if the signature is valid, it says, okay, this is really you, I can, I can let you in. Um, and it's, the, the good thing about it is that your, your password never even leaves your computer. Um, and uh, no one else could do anything with this. So, because if, if someone else, even if someone else were, inter were to intercept this, well, the next time Gadi would give, would give this person a, a different cha a challenge. And so his, the signature he, he got from you would be completely worthless. worthless. So let's create um, a key pair. The command for that is SSH keygen um, minus T uh, for the, for the, for the um, protocol for creating the, the keys. Uh, I think I think ECDSH is a is a really strong um, one. Standard I think is RSA. You can give the the bit length for ECDSA. The the, the best one is 521, and then you press enter. And then it says, okay, where do you want to create the key? So this is the stand. This is the standard um, location. And then ask you for a passphrase. Now, always use a passphrase. If you were to just 
press enter here, then your, your private key would be unencrypted on your hard disk, ready for any worm or trojan or virus that comes onto your computer to copy. And then anyone else, who, the, the person who got it from your computer, would then be able to, uh, to impersonate you to Gadi or, or, well, or, or wherever. So I'm going to create, um, mistyped. So I'm creating a passphrase. And um, it has now created these files. So it has created these two, these two new files. This is the private key. Um, this is the one that I want to keep private. And this is the public key. That's the one that I want to, um, to give to other computers. So what I do is um, So it's basically just a text file. It's, it's actually a single line. And you can just copy this. I'm going now into Gadi. And I'm now, shoot. Okay, um, I have to create a new password for my NCI account again. That's point. That's disappointing. Uh, So I wanted to copy this line. And I add this to the, to the file known, uh, sorry, authorized, and it's American spelling, keys. And now, I can just, um, if, I, if I've logged out again, if I now type SSH Gadi, what it now tells me, it tells me no longer um, like up here before uh, it asks, it doesn't, it no longer asks me for my password to NC to Gadi. Instead, it asks me for the passphrase that I, of the for the for the file that I've just created. And that gives me, and that allows me to log in. Um, but I'm even lazier than that. I don't want to, <coughs> oh, sorry. by the way, this file is also what you use on GitHub to um, the, this public, the, the contents of this um, uh, the content of this file is what you give GitHub to authenticate yourself uh, in the configuration. So I don't want to always type the password for this um, for this file. So for that, um, there is an SSH agent. So if, if I don't want to always type this but I can use an SSH agent direction. And what an SSH agent does is um, it takes your private key, it asks for your password to decrypt the private key, and then it holds the decrypted private key in memory, where it's much harder to, to, for, for a virus to steal, but you still don't have to type the new password, the password every time, because every time you uh, try to log in, the remote server would set, send a challenge and your SSH agent who has, which has the, uh, the decrypted key can immediately um, answer it. 
Um, is there if you run SSH agent, just a command, it will tell it, it will give you it, it will output um, bash commands or, or commands for your for your command line. And if, I if you just copy and paste those again, then you have um, created, then you have hooked, up, hooked yourself up to the system, to this agent. And now if I type SSH add, it will ask for the password for the, for the file. <clears throat> but you can see I'm still on my local machine. I can say, SSH Gadi and I'm be immediately logged in. I don't have to type any password at all. <clears throat> um, I'm, call, I'm killing the agent now, so now it doesn't work anymore. <clears throat> but what I can do is, um, if you want to do this uh, automatic, if you want to do this automatically, um, you can type eval dollar um, dollar uh, open parentheses SSH agent. What that does, it will execute the SSH agent. It automatically e um, also eval uh, create, uh, create, evaluate all the output. So this is basically the same thing as what I've done in, with copy and paste above. <clears throat> and yes. Uh, Depending on your system, you might already have an SSH agent running in the background. So, uh, yeah, so I, I don't have one now. Um, that's the overwritten it. So, um, I'm trying to figure out what's the uh, what best here. Uh, in I have created a Linux script. Okay. Um, trying to figure out the best way of, I forgot to do this before. I was planning to do this before. Instead of manually copying this uh, public key file, you can also use the, use the uh, on this machine, the command SSH copy ID. Um, So I have on, on access dev, uh, I have created a script. I've created this, this script here. 
um, that automatically um, checks whether you have an whether you have uh, an SSH agent already running. If yes, it just co it just connects to that agent. If not, it starts a new one. So um, I will link to this file in the YouTube video once I've uploaded it. And I've also, um, I might also send an email around later on if you want that. Uh, or or uh, send me an email if you want, um, if you want this file. But for Mac OS, um, there's actually a better way. Um, so this is a this is a MacBook that I'm working on. If you haven't noticed, and that is um, I said put up a new thing above host star. So for all hosts, I say first add keys to agent. Yes. So this is it. And that that I can do with with with, with um, all systems. So this can be done in Linux as well. So basically, if you have an SSH agent running but you haven't added the key yet, you can still you can just say okay, the, when I log in, automatically add the key to the agent. But for macOS, you can use the Use keychain, yes, and that means that your key is then st stored in your Mac OS uh, in your Mac OS keychain. So it will automatically unlock the moment you log into your system. And so you will never have to think about this um, password ever again. And I'm just adding this file. So now, yes. So see, automatically, um, I've, I've I had to type this only once, and now it's it's stored in the agent in the in the keychain. There is no. I've deleted that. Just make sure that I'm. Yeah, no, so no such process. So even though uh, the there is no agent, um, I can always uh, I can always um, log in. This on this will only works for Mac o Mac OS computers. But um, look at depending on your Linux distribution, you might already have an SSH agent running in the background. Uh, or you might have to look up how to set it up. And if worst comes to worst, you can always use the script that I'm using. Um, the other, uh, for Windows, of course, it's a little bit trickier. Um, because uh, you, you use uh, different programs. I'll, I'll talk about Windows a little bit later, but it's important that you understand the basics about it. So let's look at the config file again. Um, I've added another computer. I, I've added um, access dev. So what I can do here, I can just say add access dev here. Here. Um, so now if it, if the host is, I, if I type either access dev or guardi, it will use this, but it will, and, but I have to, replace this by a um, by this uh, variable and that way it will automatically work as well but the agent can do something even better if 
and I've, I've now logged into, into Access Dev, and um, that worked fine. I didn't have to type a password, anything. But if I now go on uh, to Gadi from here, okay, it hasn't. And now it's asking me for my password again. Um, and that, if I don't want to do that, what I can do uh, from my home computer is use the agent forwarding, that's capital A. And what that does is when I now type SSH Gadi, and it sh should have done that, shouldn't have done that. This is weird. In the other direction. Oh. Strange. Claire, do you have an idea why it's not working? have done something weird. <clears throat> anyway. <clears throat> so what it was meant to do and what it usually does is with the, with the agent forwarding, I still have my own local computer with this SSH agent running and the decrypted private key inside it. I log into access dev and if I then log on from AccessDev into Gadi, I'll send an, uh, the, the Gadi will say it, send a challenge to AccessDev. AccessDev will then pass this challenge over to my local computer where it's going to be, to be uh, answered and the response is sent, then sent back into Gadi. And I'm just, I'm a little bit surprised that it isn't working. Let me quickly look at my at my normal uh, file. So where's my DVD? No. I wonder whether me having used and then discarded the Yeah, it must have been something with we having used and then discarded the normal SSH agent that it's that it's not working. So you can see on this new on on this new um, shell script uh, on this new shell where none of this where where, where but that was basically clean, um, but was I still had access to the keychain. Um, it was able to I was able to log onto Gadi, onto Gadi, and then from Gadi to Access Dev, without having to enter my password again, because both of them knew my uh, knew the, the the public key from my local machine. So it 
So this is roughly as much as I wanted to talk about. Um, ah, yes, Windows. The most common Windows, um, the most common Windows uh, SSH client is uh, called Putty. Um, and Putty comes uh, so is a, it's it's a graphical user interface. So you have to configure it with the in a in a in the in in the program with the way that you normally configure programs. And it does have pag pagint. Um, that's the that's the authentication agent. So you you would want uh, that's the one that that keeps your your keys. Um, you have uh, putty gen, which to create the, the keys. Apparently, it cannot do ACDSA, but it can do RSA. RSA is good enough. Um, yeah. So this is what we what you would use for for uh, Windows. And there are, there are many good documentations about how to how to use it with good, this putty. How it's important that you know what you want to do, um, and then you can find stuff how to do it. Uh, so. Are there any questions? How can you how can you deactivate a necessary agent? Ah yes, I think you did um, it. But I missed it. Okay, so the first thing what you can do is you can SSH at uh, minus capital L tell, shows you all the things that are currently because here I'm not using an SSH agent I'm using the keychain. Um, but uh, normally, was if you have if you had an agent um, that would list the keys, and then um, minus capital D would delete all the keys that are in there. So that would not stop the SSH agent; it would still be there, but you it would have deleted all the keys that it would, that it had at the, uh, from the agent. Now, if you want to kill the agent. Um, if you look at what it does, if you look at this SSH agent, it sets this SSH agent PID environment variable. And that is um, the, the uh, process ID um, of the agent itself. So you can just say kill um, 55111 and that kills the agent. Um, and that, that kills the agent and then Everything goes goes away. Um, apparently, that interferes with the with the um, keychain for some reason on the on on macOS. But you wouldn't do it on macOS anyway. But on Linux, that is how you do it. Or if you want to do it automatically, you can just say kill dollar um, ssh agent pid. Of course, now there is no such process anymore. Okay. Well, um, then that's all I want to talk about. I will now have to change my NCI password. I don't think it was long enough on the screen for you to have copied it, but uh, I'm still going to. I'm still going to change it. Um, please never use uh, a key without uh, a, a key without a password. Um, because uh, I think NCI actually has been uh, someone. Some hackers have gained access to NCI machines with through one of through a uh, key that had not that ha didn't have a password. So they don't really like that because once attackers are on the system, they can then try to to um, do more harm. Uh, yes. So I've talked about keys. I've talked about X11 forwarding. Um, yeah, that's, um, that's it. The question about the password protected keys. Yes. Um, if the key has a, a password attached to it, can you still use it um, in an automated process like a cron job, an rsync, or 
is there a manual, um, there would have to be a manual step to type in that key at that point? So if, um, if you have an SSH agent running and your cron job has access to this, through this, um, uh, uh, you, through, to this agent, which is usually done by setting, uh, by, by, by making available these two, um, uh, these two environment variables. So SSH of SOC, the so socket to, to just interface with it, with the agent and the PID, the, the process ID. If you, uh, if they have access to these things, then they can use the, the agent the same way you would. So I'm co co looking over there because that's where your face is. I have to remember to look into the camera. Okay, so thank you for coming. Um, maybe one more, maybe one more thing. Uh, if I go to GitHub, uh, settings, settings. Yeah, SSH and GPG keys. This is where where you you would say new SSH key, and then you give it a title. So temporary key and copy this paste that in here and SSH key and This, and then this the, the key is in there. So that's how you add it to the to the repository. And that makes it much easier. Again, with, a, with an SSH agent, you never have to authenticate yourself again uh, because the agent will automatically handle that. Every time you did a, do a git clone or did push, um, it, it works. So suppose, suppose um, our laptop gets stolen. Does that mean that anybody can... Uh can get into those remote computers more easily with the SSH agent or is it also fine? Well, that depends on how good your passwords are. So again, if, if, you're, if, you're, um, if they get your, your login password and you use the keychain, then the moment they log in, the keychain will unlock your, your uh, SSH key as well. Um, and then they can log in, yes. But if you use a strong password for your, for your um, for your access, then they will have some trouble logging in. And hopefully that gives you the time to disable all the keys. By the way, um, let's go through this because that's, um, uh, so what you, what you do is um, you go to .ssh and then you get, uh, then you use any text editor. Um, you go to this authorized key fi keys file and then you just delete this one line. And, and now it doesn't work anymore. So if I, if I now log in, I now have to use my password again. And while I'm here, um, copying everything back so that my normal uh, keys work again. Okay, um, yes, so I hope I was reasonably, um, 
I hope I was, I hope I was reasonably uh, concise and understandable. And uh, thanks for coming.